Breaking news from the Radio DJ Dude News Center. I'm Jeff, Radio DJ Dude. An incredible breakthrough has just been achieved with Radio DJ software's functionality called Folder Sync, which many have used to automatically import music and other track elements into the software. The one stumbling block of Folder Sync has always been when you're trying to import voice tracks or sweepers, anything that's an overlay file, Folder Sync was kind of a fail. But all that's changed. For the complete story, we go to a top secret mountaintop laboratory and check in with technology correspondent, radio DJ dude, Jeff. Jeff? Thank you, Jeff. As Jeff mentioned, this is a true breakthrough and the effects are sending shockwaves through the radio DJ community. For more, let's jump right in. We are on the air. For those of you unfamiliar with Folder Sync, it's basically Radio DJ's watch folder system. You tell the software to keep its eye on a particular folder or folders, and anytime new files, new tracks hit these folders, bring them on in, import them to the database based on settings that you predetermine in the Folder Sync window. In this example, it's going to be watching this particular folder on my D drive. And when new files hit, it'll then import them to the database and put them in the category of music, the subcategory of 80s, with a genre of top 40, and set the track type to music. Boom. It's set up. It's watching for anything new. And Folder Sync could either be triggered manually, or you could set up events to do so. For music jingles, commercials, and any other file type that does not require to be an overlay file, this is a bang-up system, and it works pretty well. But if you're trying to import voice tracks that need to be imported as an overlay file so they'll play correctly over other audio elements, Folder Sync is a fail. Let's create a new folder called Test VO Sync. And then back in Folder Sync, we're going to tell Radio DJ to keep its eye on this folder, Test VO Sync, on the D drive. Whenever a new file lands in this folder, we want you to import it as a voice track in the test subcategory. Genre doesn't matter, but set it to voiceover track type. Okay, that's really important. So we create that Folder Sync action. Let's go drop some files in that folder and see what happens. Head back to Radio DJ. Let's monitor that folder we created, test, under voice tracks. Right now it's empty, obviously. So we'll go to Folder Sync now that we have a couple juicy files for this baby to bring in. Let's click Sync Now, close this up, reload the test folder, whammo bammo, look at that. It brought in those three files that we dropped in the folder. And it brought them into our specs. Category voice tracks, dropped them in the subcategory uh, test, and set the track type to voiceover. But the big fail, and the reason this will derail your radio train, is Folder Sync has no way of activating the overlay file flag. We need to tell the database this is an overlay file. It needs to be run over a specific piece of audio. So using Folder Sync by itself requires another step. Once you run a Folder Sync, you have to then open up the track edit and make all these changes manually. So why is this important? So I run a lot of audio elements, voiceovers over different music beds, from my weather bed to tease beds going into stop sets. And you'll see this, this teaser music bed has a next start point. So this will play. And boom. Right there at the next start, it'll trigger the voiceover. And I'll show you what happens if the voiceover is not set to be an overlay file as this one right now isn't. Triple X 80s and Jam and Jeff Scott playing only the best 80s music. Except if you really don't like this song, then playing only the best 80s music. Except for this song. <laughs> See how we did that? We're the station that cares. Ruh -ruh. You hear that? Horrible train wreck. The tease bed is still playing. It continues to play because it doesn't get that signal, which happens to be right here, next start, end, which is embedded in your voiceover file. Something else you can't take advantage of are some of the sound settings. So when you flag your voiceovers as an overlay file, Radio DJ 
will look to your mix settings to adjust the volume of the audio element that's under your overlay file. And that's really important. So this may not be important for some of you. Up until now, you had to do extra work. But today is Liberation Day. I stumbled on a really cool fix when preparing for a video on how to use Radio DJ to automate live remotes. So if you're out in the field and you want to send audio clips into your station and get them on the air and maybe play them over a music bed, I found a solution. And step one, we've already accomplished. We've created the watch folder. Let's pop over to events because this is where the magic lives. So if you look at this event, let's dissect what's about to happen. Our first event action is to run a folder sync. Okay, boom. Then I wait a couple seconds. And the secret sauce, which dumb luck led me to this. In the past, I've always struck out when trying to use run SQL query in an event. It usually doesn't work the way you want it to. But one thing it does accomplish is run a query and write data to your database. And that's exactly what we want to do. And I wrote this specific SQL code to pull off just what we need. Remote VO query. So it's in there. And I wait another couple more seconds. And the next two event actions here relate to my video I'm about to do about using Radio DJ for live remotes. And now you can kind of automate that process. And right up here when that video is ready, yes, there'll be a link. But what's happening basically, it loads a live remote music bed and then a voiceover track that you have sent in from the field, which is pretty cool. But this voiceover track wouldn't work properly over this music bed if we didn't have a way to tell Radio DJ that it's supposed to be an overlay file. And when you're in the field, you know, time to monkey with the database or try to open Radio DJ on your phone and hunt around to make these changes. So this automates the entire process. Why? Well, it's that code. Let's dive into that. This is it. This one line accomplishes the unthinkable. Basically, it's updating your songs database where everything lives on your radio station. And it's setting the overlay value to one, basically turning it on. And once again, for my live remote demo, I'm having it also write the artist name. You can delete that if you want to. So that's the action. But the condition is song type equals three. And three is the song type of voiceovers in Radio DJ. Has to be enabled. And this is going to be totally different for you. You need to figure out which subcategory that you're placing these voiceovers in. So here we are in our database, and these are the three songs we just imported. And if we look, their ID subcategory is 133. Currently, they're not an overlay file. Not yet, at least. And the last condition I add, I say, only make these changes to files that have never been played. Let's do this. Let's uh, delete these tracks. And now let's run that event, which is right down here. Remote sync and load. Event has been triggered. Let's see what we get. After it finishes the event, you should see the tease bed come up, and then it should load one of these new voiceover files that the folder sync brought in to the test subcategory. And you see it brought in those three files that we had. Okay, so we know that part works. Duh, I mean, that already is a proven entity. Let's see if the code portion actually worked. Ha ha, look at that. One. Two, three. So when we play this, this overlay voiceover file will tell Radio DJ to stop playing the tease bed as soon as it ends, and then it will advance to the next element. So let's add a simple liner to this so you could hear that it actually does stop the tease bed right after the overlay voiceover file plays. Triple X 80s, and what'd you say to me? I said, Jeff. I love it when you say that. Will you say it again? Yeah. Oh, hang on, let me turn the lights down and <laughs> let me open up this box of wine. Okay, say it now. Okay, Jeff. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Triple X 80s. Totally awesome radio. So when that voiceover file finished playing, it stopped the other audio element at the same time, which is the whole point of an overlay file in addition to getting some audio mix benefits. So your music bed or other audio element won't overpower your overlay file. So that's another benefit of using overlay files. 
this solution definitely saves you a bunch of time, and it's great if you're trying to do things remotely. So as soon as the folder sync happens, these voiceover files are then rewritten in your database as overlay files. If we hop back over to our database, we refresh it, and here are the three files we just brought in. Scroll over here. Bingo, bango. They've all been changed to overlay files. But let's say you did want to change the artist information. So now I'm asking this to not only change those files to overlay files, but then rewrite the artist information as triple X 80s. Let's run this again, see what happens. Triple X 80s and Jeb and Jeff Scott playing only the best 80s music. There we go. And you see, it didn't rewrite this one because in the code we said only rewrite the data for songs or files that have never been played. And we played this file for that last example. And you can control, let's say you don't want to manually fire this event. Well, you could set it up to repeat every day a couple times an hour or just once a day. Now, I want to make sure you get it. So let's build an event with just the bare essentials to do an overwrite for the overlay. So creating a new event, you want a manual event. We're first going to select a plugin action. A little folder syncage, we add that. And then we have to run our code so it'll rewrite the database. Run SQL query and you find the file. It's important to name your file .sql. Open, add the action. And there you have it. But to be safe, I mean, I feel like even like three seconds would be good to put in between syncing the folders, waiting, and then running the code. And let's blow these out and run this test again. Okay, VO sync. It should be doing this very fast. It's bringing the files over. It's rewriting the database. And then we'll refresh our test subcategory. And there they are and all their overlay glory. And they've actually changed the artist name. This also works well for variable duration files. So if you're importing content with different running times every time, well, this is great for that too. But keep in mind, anytime you change the track type, you have to modify the code. So here's the number of a couple song or track types that you would want to use as overlay files. What makes this really cool, you could have a couple different DJs or a couple different people working on production elements, and they're uploading their new files into these key watch folders from anywhere in the world. And through an event, Radio DJ is automatically importing their files and flagging them appropriately. A huge time saver and a big functionality booster. Just downright incredible. Reporting from a top secret mountaintop bunker, I'm Chief Technology Correspondent Jeff for Radio DJ Dude News. Back to you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff, for that compelling and some would say life-altering story. And hopefully you now will have the confidence to use Radio DJ's folder sync functionality to confidently import anything that needs to be flagged as an overlay file. This concludes this breaking news from the Radio DJ News Center. I'm Jeff. Radio DJ Dude.